Hi guys, how we doing? My name is Sam Cates. I'm the founder and owner of Tiny Tenkara, and this is just going to be a quick uh, voiceover walkthrough video of me using the Tiny Ten on its home waters, so the uh, Cheyenne Creek, which is just a couple minutes from my house. Um, and so this is just some GoPro footage I have uh, from over the summer, and I'm just going to walk through kind of some trips and or tips and tricks that I have learned from fishing small waters with a small rod, and also I'll just kind of generally explain what's going on in the video. So. Uh, this is a very wide section of the creek. Normally, it's not this wide, uh, but even the, the fact that it is wide, I still exclusively do the bow and arrow casts on creeks this small. Uh, I just like to get in that habit of not having to worry about back cast. So here, I'm just going to use that bow and arrow cast, and I'm going to flick it right behind that white rock, white rock you see, and boom, flick it out there. You get a fish. Um, a lot of this fishing is sight fishing because this stream is pretty clear and pretty shallow. So you can really see where the fish are and you can just use that barrel and arrow cast and flick that fly right out in front of them and then won't take it. So right here in this section of the video, this is kind of, I just wanted to show you what this creek, how wide it normally is. So it's a very skinny, narrow creek. Um, and this next part, uh, I'm just going to talk about walking through these overgrown uh, creek areas with a rod. So right here you can see I've got the line kind of trapped up against the handle. I'm using my hand that's on the rod to hold the line. I've got a pinch between my thumb and forefinger. That way you've got no loops hanging off the rod um, that'll get caught on trees. And when I'm walking through heavy underbrush like that, I always like to lead with the tip of the rod. And that way it'll minimize you getting snagged up on stuff. So here um, kind of just shows you can get pretty close to these fish. Like there was a couple fish in there. One's gonna, one gets scared, skirts out. Um, and then this next one, there's a little tiny guy up against this bank. Um, and it's just fun to see how I'll, I'll throw this fly at him, which is probably, you know, two-thirds or a third of his body length, and he'll still go after it. You know, there's no way you can fit it in his mouth, but it's cool to see how just naive and hungry these fish are up here, and they're a lot of fun. Um, also, that goes to show you, right, when you see a fish leave, I, I like to think that there's, you know, there's only one to two fish in each one of these holes, these tiny little holes on these creeks. And so, for me, creek fishing is a very active um, activity because... I'll put two or three good casts in a hole. If I don't get anything, I don't think there's a fish in there, so I'll just walk up to the next one. And as you can see right there, I you know walked to the next hole, first cast caught a fish, and that's kind of you know what I've come to expect. And you 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 probably can't come to expect if you're fishing little creeks like these, is you know if you put two or three good casts into a hole and you're not getting anything, just move on to the next one because there are so many holes that you can visit on a creek. Um, so right here. I just kind of show like the average length of time I'd like to have a fish out of water for. So um, what I did first is I wet my hand, right, just because fish produce a muc protective mucus. And if you handle them with dry hands, then it just strips all that off. But if you wet it down, it kind of minimizes that. So I'm just going to do a quick, show it quickly to the camera real quick so you guys can see it. And then I'm going to let them go. Um, and so th that's what I really like to do is because these fish are so small, they have not a lot of stamina for being out of water for very long. Um, and so I always do catch and release these fish as well. I never keep any of them to eat just because it is a pretty a small, fragile ecosystem on yeah, these creeks. Yeah. And um, I, don't, I just think they're really not worth it for the size in, a, in any, you know, you might as well just throw them back in and let them grow a little yeah, bit more. Or, and, you, and then you get to catch them again, you know, it's a lot of fun. So this next hole, yeah. right, caught a fish in that last one, so I'm just going to move on to the next hole. And this next hole really shows why you... Uh, I designed such a small rod for these creeks. And so up here on this hole, we're going to be, you know, bone air casting underneath these branches. I'm going to have to squat down, and I'm going to be throwing a fly up against that log. And there's a little fish in there. And if you're trying to do, you know, this with a longer rod, it would be pretty difficult, um, just because you get hung up and you, there's no, there's just no room to maneuver. Um, a long rod in here, and so that's why I really like this, sh this short rod that I designed. Um, and you can really get in there and you don't have to worry about it. Uh, you'll see in just about a second here, I do also get tangled up on a rock just to my left. Um, but the cool thing about having such a short rod is when you do get tangled up in these situations, is everything is uh, within arm's reach. So, like right here, right, I'm, I'm tangled up on the rock, so I can use the rod to untangle myself. And if you if you can't, you've got to go, you know, pick the fly out of a bush. The cool thing is, is it's all kind of with arm reach versus, you know, if you're using a 12 foot long car rod, you get your fly stuck, you know, 24 feet up in a tree, you're kind of, kind of hosed there. But right there, just threw it in there. Um, 
you know, for a third or fourth time, and there, you know, I could see him dancing around and they're going for a bite, but I couldn't hook him, so that's why I threw it in there, uh, you know, more than that two to three rule I was talking about, but you see him, you know, chuck him in there, he'll come out and get it. Um, so here is an example of really the longest I would like to have a fish out of these streams for. Um, the reason for that, uh, that, the reason why I'm holding him out for so long is um, I'm with my twin sister Hannah and my dog Scout and we're out here just trying to get um, some content for you know, social media and stuff like that. So she's got to be able to come in and take some pictures, which uh, does take uh, just a little bit of time. And But normally I would not keep a fish out of the water for this long. So. When, since he has been out of the water for so long, what I'm doing right here with the fish is I'm just loosely holding him in my hand, allowing uh, water to run over his gills so he gets some oxygen in his blood, you know, can kind of regain his breath, and then when he's ready, like you'll see right there, just shoots out, um, and he's on his way. And I think that's just the best way to do it when you've had a, a fish out of water for longer than you like. You can kind of, you know, let them catch their breath and then let them do their own thing. So right here is a perfect example of how forgiving these fish are. Um, you can see that there is a fish about at 12 o'clock and then another one at 11 and the one at 12 o'clock is going to come up for the fly there and then he's going to move over he's going to come back for it again right there um, and right here I am using over a catch just because there's no back cast in my in the way and I, I wanted to get quick because the one problem with the bone arrow cast is it takes a long time between in between class so right here is an example of that holding technique right you can see the fish grabs a couple of breasts and he swims out um, which is really great. Um, right here uh, is another example of kind of just like a, you know, one cast, one fish thing. And so I'm just going to move over to the next spot, bone arrow cast it in, and to be a, you know, another big fish. This is actually crazy thing. This is the biggest fish we caught on just this little trip up into the creek. And as you'll see, it's still a pretty small fish. It's only about six, seven inches, but right there first cast and we bring them in and so like I said when you're bringing the fish towards you you know try to keep them in the water as long as possible and I'm just gonna drag them over and I gotta lift them up up and over the log real quick as fast as I can and we'll keep them in the water but yeah that's a it's a pretty big fish for a stream this size and I was pretty happy with that so like I said I'm just gonna wet my hand take the fly out and this guy's also gonna be out of water for longer than I would like uh, just because we are trying to get some pictures of him and so she's going to take a couple of pics and we'll get him back in the water but I just want to you know thank you guys for watching and uh, keep out uh, look out for uh, a collab with uh, Yona Packs we're making uh, uh, coming out with a nice little side bag that'll hold all the stuff you need plus the tiny tent and we think it's perfect keep uh, eyes out for that um, we also will have the rods back in stock uh, hopefully within two weeks and yeah, so thanks for watching and hope you guys enjoy.